We are back in the mountains for stage 18 of La Vuelta a España here on GCN Racing. Yesterday, just wow, 219 kilometers of frantic cross and tailwind action resulted in the fastest ever road race of over 200 k's, 50.6 kilometers per hour, the average speed. And the fastest of them all was Philippe Gilbert, who took his second stage win of the race after getting the better of Sam Bennett. This hand sling, illegal under UCI rules, would ultimately cost Miguel Angel Lopez in the form of a 10 second penalty. Primoz Roglic retained his red jersey, but my word, did he, his team and plenty of other teams have to fight for it. Quintana, the only major threat to get into the front move, and in doing so, launched himself up to second place on GC. Today, another stage to make the sprinters weep. Four first category climbs along the route, which had been extended up to 178.2 kilometres by the organisers. It may not have been a mountain top finish, but there was still plenty of terrain for the climbers to get their teeth stuck into. The only flattish section, in fact, came towards the beginning of the stage, and we saw plenty of riders attempting to get a head start before that first climb of the day. However, the first major move came once the climb had started. This is Wout Pools of Team Ineos in a solo move off the front, near to the foot of that climb. The pace was always very high behind him, but coming up towards the top, Pools still had a 37 second advantage. And it would be he, in fact, that would take maximum points going over the top of the climb, they being 10. Behind, Bouchard could be content with the six points that were on offer for second place, extending his lead in the blue polka dot competition. And my word, is he sporting a lot of blue polka dots. The gap to Pools tumbled on the flowing descent as the relentless attacking continued. He'd eventually be joined by teammate Theo Gegenhardt, Bouchard himself, Ludwigsen, Higita, Schultz and Menkes. Another group would also come across to them with representation from Astana, Movistar, Jumbo Visma, all adding to the potential tactics the teams could use later in the day. Last man across to them was Pernsteiner of Bahrain Merida. He was a big loser in yesterday's stage, falling from 10th to 17th on GC, having lost over 23 minutes. Behind, Jumbo Visma had things just as they wanted them. This was turning out to be a much simpler stage to control than yesterday, or at least it was until Astana hit the front on the penultimate climb of the day. Up front, Pools was on the attack again, Higita glued to his wheel, Mainkey's trying his best to get across. Jakob Fulsang was the last rider from Astana to do a monster turn on the front, and I think we all knew what was coming next. A huge attack from Lopez, the rest seemingly unable to go with him. Thankfully for Roglic though, Sepp Kuss was being as reliable as ever, immediately hitting the front of the group behind to set a tempo. And it was a tempo that meant that Lopez's lead never crept up too high, just 11 seconds as they neared the top of the climb. For this man, Geoffrey Bouchard, this was another opportunity to take more points in that KOM competition. He took the full 10 crossing the line first, and he's looking good now to take that jersey all the way to Madrid. On the descent, Omar Fraley had dropped back to help Lopez and was absolutely drilling it on the front. Meanwhile, out front by this point was Sergio Higuita. He's shown us already in this race that he can climb and even sprint, and now he was showing us his prowess on the descents. As they came to the foot of the final climb, the Lopez group had caught all but one of the breakaway, but soon after, they'd all been caught by the Roglic group, and we were basically back to square one. For this man though, it was all about the stage win. He was one of the big losers on yesterday's stage, but that clearly hadn't affected his morale or his legs. Lopez though couldn't be held back today. Perhaps sensing some weakness in his rivals, he went on the attack again. He would put Pogacar into some trouble, but Valverde, Roglic and later Mike were able to make it up with him. Whatever happens, it's been a great race for that man, but the white jersey was slipping away from him today. Coming up to the top of the final climb and Higita's gap was dwindling, 45 seconds to the chase group of four, this stage was still hanging in the balance. Playing into Higita's favour though was the fact that only Lopez was working in that group behind, Valverde didn't want to further distance Quintana, Roglic didn't need to and Mike just didn't. The gap between them and the Pogacar group was continuing to increase though and at this point Lopez was back in the virtual white jersey, Carl Frederick Hagen once again doing a great ride for Lotto Sudal though, he's been one of the revelations of the race. Under the Flam Rouge and Higita could almost breathe a sigh of relief, 23 seconds his gap and although he was clearly suffering, he wasn't showing any signs of slowing down. It's been a tough old race for EF Education first who lost half their team to crashes and injuries in the first week but perseverance pays off and today they are rewarded with their first Grand Tour stage win of the season and a first pro win for Higita. Behind Roglic managed to outsprint Valverde for second place taking the six bonus seconds with it. For Lopez though it was all about the gap to Bogaccia here and it would be just under one minute between the two of them. 
Another young rider and another Colombian wins big. Higuita, just 22 years of age, and he only made the leap up to the World Tour at the start of May this year. There's your top nine on the stage. Higuita taking it from Roglic, Javeli in third, Mike in fourth, and Lopez in fifth. For Primoz Roglic, that means it's one step closer to taking his first overall Grand Tour win. His advantage is now bigger than it's ever been. 2 minutes and 50 seconds over Alejandro Valverde, who leapfrogs his teammate Quintana into second. Lopez now up to fourth and into that white jersey, whilst Pogaccia moves down to fifth place. Mike Kirk, Kelderman, Hagen and Knox rounding out the top nine. Tomorrow, the peloton should be able to have a slightly easier day. It's a 165.2 km stage into Toledo, which looks reasonably easy. There's a third category climb from the start, but that's the only major hurdle of the day, after which we have rolling to flat terrain. However, don't expect this to be a classic bunch sprint. The last 1k is uphill on a 6% gradient, so it's possible we'll see yet another breakaway success. Once again, there is also a chance of crosswinds. My prediction, Luis Leon Sanchez. See you tomorrow.